is Tariq Talk. Your host, Tariq Mendez, takes you on a journey with guests from all around the world. Broadcasting around the world. Around the world. This is Tariq Talk. Today I'm here with Avni Patel. Did I get that right? Yes. Awesome. I am at the Chishama Arts Open Art Studios. Uh, thank you so much for being on the podcast. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Um, can you tell me a little bit about um, yourself as an artist? So I'm as an artist, I'm an abstract painter, expressionist. Uh, my work is uh, about nature, sound, music, um, elements of textiles, mm-hmm. and uh, just joyfulness in my paintings. Yes. You, I, the thing I like that caught um, my attention about your art is that it's very happy. It like, takes you to a portal. And it brings like happiness and relaxed. Um, do you work only with paintings, or do you do other mediums? I only do paintings, uh, acrylic paint and paint markers. Mm-hmm. But I like to explore with different forms of paper mm-hmm. and on plastic and any material I can find uh, oh, nice. to play with. And what's your creative process like when you come to the studio? Um, do you get to work right away? Or do you have to have a coffee, meditate, read the newspaper? How is that for you? So. When I come to the studio, I just like to sit for a moment, look mm-hmm. at my paintings, look at my color studies, mm-hmm. that which I create about three, four hundred drawings. Uh-huh. I call them my vocabularies. So I look at them and then I start the process. Oh, nice. With the whole, like, with my music and my dance, and I go with the color playfulness yeah. with them. Oh, wow. And do you like to work more in the daytime or nighttime, or are you, like, spontaneous? I'm a more daytime, morning mm. person. So I usually get around seven thirty, eight o'clock in the morning oh wow um and then i'm here to like four or five o'clock oh, so wow. that gives me more energy yeah. i think the mornings are the best to work i love that and how do you keep um track of your ideas do you have like a little sketchbook or notepad they're all spontaneous i oh, don't wow. have a ske- i do have a sketchbook i draw in my sketchbook but they're all spontaneously done oh, wow. that's so cool so like when you start a painting it's like a ver- very organic process yeah. for you yeah oh that's amazing and yeah. when you start a painting are you able to finish that painting right away or does it take you a couple it, of days it takes a process it okay. takes a couple of days so mm-hmm. it needs to dry and then i think about more of my patterns i go back next day with my uh, more patterns and color studies oh, wow. so i'm always like evolving exploring yeah. in different elements in that's my paintings. so cool and do you work on multiple paintings at once or do you like to be so if i have a exhibition coming up yeah. i would do multiple but then okay. if i don't have a show i'll do just a painting at a time oh nice yeah and can you tell us any projects you're working on at the moment or next year so right now i have a mural mm-hmm. up in crown heights oh nice. on 989 pacific street okay and then i have a solo show coming up uh, in manhattan oh congrats um, thank you and uh, uh, next month okay uh, through q art foundation and then oh, i have nice. a show up right now at penn state university oh congrats uh, and the next show will be upstate new york solo oh, wow. you're a busy lady congratulations <laughs> so, always you. good to be busy do you mind sharing your instagram so the listeners can keep track of your future shows and hopefully attend as well yes yeah, so my instagram is unique underscore a v a n i so unique u n i Q U E underscore A V A N I. Awesome. And do you have any projects or like dream collaborations that you want to do in the future, like big sculptures or a different medium you want to try? Yes, I really want to create a big sculpture uh-huh. out of my little creatures. Uh-huh. So I think that will connect with three dimensional landscape yeah. and also. You know uh, the movement yeah. of nature. I would love to do oh, that. I, love that. I like, would love to do. The first thing yeah. I noticed when I saw your work, it reminded me like at first I thought beautiful work, of course, but I also thought those like large sculptures that they do at a music festival, yeah, or like a cool playground for kids that's like 3D where they can climb. I think it would be so cool. Yeah. And do you mind sharing um, an advice for young artists that want to start? Uh, being an artist or start practicing art but they don't know what to do or they're a little scared like do you have any advice for them yes just believe in yourself keep going you know me as a young artist many years ago you know i never gave up Uh even though new york is a tough place uh to be an artist but i been doing it for 25 years so keep going and just create something that's in you yeah. never give up <laughs> oh i love that and do you think your how would you say your work has changed over the 25 years like when you first started to now so first it has been evolving which is i love yeah in my work it has changed but the the true 
thickness of colors are still in my paintings. Yeah. So um, it's going in a happy mode, the recent work, oh, wow. and its connection with like nature and human. Oh, wow. So that's what my work is based on now. That's so cool. Yeah. And when once you paint a painting, and if like you're not sure how to finish or you don't like it, do you normally throw that painting out, or do you leave it aside and go back to it in the future? I always correct that painting. Okay. I never throw it out because. <laughs> I'm uh yeah I don't like to throw anything away yeah. <laughs> as like a environmentalist yeah. you know you don't want to harm things yeah. so I make something that's destroyed into again oh, uh, nice. the process of overlapping of yeah. more colors and patterns. Oh, wow. And do you ever go back to your old work and try to like reference yourself a little bit or like redo something you did in I the do. past? I yeah. do. I go back and forth looking at my old work and I'm like, "Oh, how did I do that?" Yeah. And I, now I need to recreate that in oh, the wow. new work. That's so cool. So. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for being on the Thank podcast. You. Um, can you share your Instagram one more time for the listeners? Yeah, so Instagram is unique underscore A V A N I. Perfect. Thank you again. Thank you for listening to Tariq Talk. Follow Tariq Talk on all social media channels and check out the video interviews online. This is Tariq Talk. Your host, Tariq Mendez, takes you on a journey with guests from all around the world. Broadcasting around the world. Around the world. This is... Tariq Talk. All right, guys. Today I'm here with Annika with Oh Baby at Booth 109. How are you today? I'm great. I'm so happy. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. I love the grills, by the way. That's Thank such a cool you. detail. <laughs> Would you mind telling us a little bit about your work and your booth here? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm the designer behind Oh Baby by Annika. That's me. Basically, what I do is I... Every garment I designed starts off with a painting. Oh, so nice. every seasonal collection has basically the painting, um, the painting collection, yeah. right? So you'll see it come in through prints um, and colorways. And my jackets are one of my special linings you can see here. So um, trench coats are one of my favorite things to design. Oh, so you'll see that a lot on the page. Um, so yeah, that's yeah. what I do. And can you tell us a little bit about your creative process? Like how do ideas come to you? So I normally start off my ideas with a concept, like okay. what am I trying to bring across to people, um, and then I go on to what is the subject. So, like for example, lately I've been doing photographs that okay. have been my basis for oh, the collection. Nice. So you'll see um, photos of Bushwick, okay. um, which is where my studio is in Brooklyn. Oh, nice. um, also photos of New York City, and then I print those out and I paint on them, depending on the concept. Oh, that's so so dope. yeah. A lot of, lot of layers. And how, <laughs> you have so much work here. How do you keep track of your ideas? Do you like write them down? Have like the notes on the iPhone, like a sketchbook? How does that work for you? I do spreadsheets, actually. Oh, nice. I love spreadsheets, um, especially when I do clothing. I have to keep everything super organized because yeah. I have samples coming in. So spreadsheets are the best. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's so dope. And I do a lot of Adobe Illustrator, obviously, with oh, the okay. tech packs of designing yeah. clothing and things. So that also keeps me organized, oh, too. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. And, like, what's your studio ritual like? Do, when you first come in, do you get to work right away? Do you have a coffee, meditate, to, like, get the vibes and then get to work? How does that work for you? Yeah, normally I try to get in as early as I can unless I've stayed up all night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that depends. Um, but normally I start off with a coffee. I blast music. Okay. I have hula hoops in the studio. I have okay. my roller skates in the studio. Oh, nice. So... It depends on the day, um, but I normally like to start it off creatively, like yeah. not right in the emails. Oh, you know okay. what I'm saying? Very so maybe smart. just a little yeah. like creative energy going and yeah. good music. Oh, I yeah. love that. You have such a good vibe. Thanks. And do you have any like dream projects that you want to do in the future where it's like big life like life size sculptures or collabs or anything like that? You know, I honestly I I just want to continue to scale my business. Right uh -huh. now I'm on such a Incline, and I'm so excited to continue sharing this. Yeah. So, basically, I just want to focus on making the best product that I can, and I know that whatever's meant to be will be. And collaborations, of course, with like larger brands. Um, I think my biggest goal is getting into a couple large stores like yeah. across the United States and hopefully internationally. I won't limit that to like a specific uh, company or person, yeah. but basically, just 
continued on to living off my yeah. uh, designs and art and growing the brand and bringing it to more people. That's, Period. I that's, love that's that. what I want. I yeah. Love that. <laughs> and then, do you have any advice for like young art? Because a lot of listeners always ask me, "Oh, can you ask your guest like what, what's an advice for like a young artist that like wants to try but they're scared, they don't know how to start? Like, what would you tell them?" Like my advice would be, um, figure out where this feeling is coming from. Like, is it a genuine feeling? Um, what what avenue do you want to go into? Do you want to go into painting, clothing? Um, do you want to try it all? And then my kind of deciding factor to like, I had to make money, right? Yeah. So I dropped out of college and I had to make money. So I found a sales channel and that happened to be a street market. Uh-huh. And that literally changed my life because oh, nice. I it was in front of so many people, which I recommend um, going to your local markets. Every city has a market. Go bring your art, bring your clothes, bring your whatever, photographs. Bring them there in front of people. Get their feedback. Sell it. Get it out there in the world. And it starts to affect... It starts to like go yeah, like a tumbleweed. Yeah. Tumbleweed. Yeah. <laughs> so I would just say get in as many people... Get it in front of as many people as you can. That's dope. And going back to your art, I see like you seem to use like a lot of mediums. Like I'm guessing like spray yeah. paint, acrylic. Yeah. Can you like describe a little bit like about the materials you use? Yeah. I'm, each piece like changes up. And obviously I love clothes so much that I have a lot of fabric samples. Uh-huh. So... Basically, I'll use like some patches, which is a signature of Ooh Baby. Um, yeah, spray paint, you're totally yeah. right. Graffiti markers. Um, I just started with oil, so I have an oil painting over there, which is awesome. Oh, cool. Um, so, yeah, this one's got like a leather belt in it. So, I really like using textiles because it yeah. ties in the clothing so well. That's so on brand. That's so genius. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Can you just plug in your Instagram one more time? Yeah, my Instagram is uh, Ooh Baby by Annika. O O A. H B A B Y B Y A N I K A. Ooh, Perfect. baby, by Annika. <laughs> thank you so much, guys. Check her work. It's so dope. She's at booth 109. And thank you again. It was a pleasure meeting Thanks. you. Thank, thank you for you. listening to Tariq Talk. Follow Tariq Talk on all social media channels and check out the video interviews online. is Tariq Talk. Your host, Tariq Mendez, takes you on a journey with guests from all around the world. Broadcasting around the world. Around the world. This is Tariq Talk. Today I'm with Megan Olson at the Brooklyn Army Terminal at, during the Chishama Open Studios. How are you, Megan? I'm good, thank you. You have such a calm demeanor, and I thank love your you. voice. You would do great for like uh, recording audiobooks. Oh, but anyway, back to the artiste. How are you today? I'm good. I'm thank good. you so much for being on the podcast. I have to say, her studio is so cool. There's so much like mediums and colors. Can you describe yourself a little bit as an artist? Sure. Um, I'm an abstract painter. Okay. And I have a lot of inspiration from the early modernist Mm -hmm. painters of the 30s and 40s. Oh, wow. And while I was in school in San Francisco in the 90s, I hung out with a lot of graffiti writers. Oh, wow. And so I kind of merged both of these influences into an abstract form of my own sort of abstracted language yeah. and so now when I do it it's it's almost like automatic writing yeah yeah it's wow it's so like it's I never seen anything like this and you just said it beautifully like it's so authentic like it does bring back to the graffiti like the inspiration but it, the way you did it is so like magnificent and can you tell me a little bit about your creative process like how do ideas come to you Usually I start with color. I'm okay. really, really interested in color theory and how colors work together. There are certain colors that I use because of the palette, just a, a personal choice. There are some pieces that I've done in the past that were sort of based on different challenges that my color theory teacher mm-hmm. had presented. One was psychological color, oh, wow. local color, social color. There's all of these conceptual ideas behind color too so for me color is really one of the most important starting points and because like I'd said it, it's sort of an abstracted visual language that I've created the decisions come as I go mm-hmm. I don't usually have a really pre-planned oh, wow. idea so it's very I, organic for you very much wow. so and 
I began getting inspired by nature. That's what led to abstraction. So I oh, think uh, it grows organically. Yeah. The thing I liked about your painting, it's like a portal that sucks you in. And it's like very peaceful and mindful. It's like the state you go to meditation. Yeah. And I love the colors. Thank you. And like, what's your studio ritual like when you come in? Are you able to get like to work right away? Yes. Or do you have to have a coffee or meditate or anything like that? No, you know what? You're right. Actually, I do. I need to, ha I'm, I make a tea. Oh, wow, I have okay. a lot of different kinds of tea oh, here. Oh, fancy. I love coffee in the morning, uh -huh. but you know, when I come here, I'll have some tea and I decide what I'm going to jump into. Um, usually it's something smaller where I'm sitting down and mm -hmm. just sort of approaching it on oh, the wow. easel. Okay. I do have, as you can see, some very large pieces. Yeah. So I might warm up and get into the bigger pieces a yeah. little later in the day. But I, I definitely like to sit with my tea oh, and wow. just sort of contemplate what's That's in very front of cool, me. Yeah. yeah. Do you happen to have like a dancer background or anything like that? That is so interesting. I personally don't, but my husband has worked for Bill T. Jones, uh -huh. the oh, famous nice. dancer yeah. for many, many years. And so I I do think seeing so much modern yeah. dance has definitely influenced yeah. the work a little. Just movement is important and Yeah, because your flow. work especially there's such a beautiful like coordination, you know, Thank it's you. so like it flows so beautifully together. Um, and like what what inspires you like what like motivates you to do art? I think for me, I've been doing art since literally I was two oh, wow, I, It okay. was just a something that my both of my parents they divorced when I was two but okay. They both were very interested in art. My father was a painter. My mother's really really creative and it was a value in uh -huh. my family and oh, wow. I was an only child. Yeah. So I think I spent so much time alone being really interested in drawing mm -hmm. and, and coloring and all of the things oh, wow. you know that you do as a kid but i just kept going with it that's so beautiful and I do you have those drawings or any artwork from that era i my mother has a couple of things and there's this one newsletter my elementary school uh -huh. did, uh -huh. <laughs> where i have all these little drawings in it and what's funny is i signed every single no way one. oh my gosh <laughs> i don't know that's why. so fabulous <laughs> it's hilarious but yeah um at this point i have to yeah do art and I almost I don't really care so much about career. Mm -hmm. I, I have had a, a pretty good career yeah. with it, but that's not the motivation at all for me. It's oh, just wow. about for me pushing the mate the materials and the medium as far as I can, and hope that I influence or at least inspire yeah. other artists. Oh wow, that's beautiful. And have that kind of feedback between artists. Oh wow. And how do you keep track of your ideas? Like, do you have like a notepad or a sketchbook or? Does it all just like sit up there in the iCloud in I your brain? Unfortunately, I write everything down, oh, wow. but in multiple places. Oh, so okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been actually working on a book. For, oh, congrats! <laughs> yeah, for like fifteen years. Wow. Just keep writing about yeah. graffiti and modernism. Oh wow! Okay. It's just the things that inspire me and yeah. the similarities that I see between the two forms. Yeah. And really trying to give people that have done graffiti as as you know their art form yeah a, a voice in the fine art world because wow, okay. they're incredibly talented people and really inspirational and a lot of them do abstract art in their studio practices oh wow so there's just this connection that i have to that world and yeah. this modernist sort of formal world oh, in wow. the fine art and i keep writing about it Oh wow! Yeah. And do you ever go back to your old work and like try to reference something or like redo something? Mm. No. No. Oh wow! No, I really uh, don't. Do you have you created like an archive of your work that you can like yeah. visit when you feel like it? Yeah. yeah. I well, I'm in the process, which is interesting. Um, I'm in this group called the American Abstract Artists. Okay. It was formed in 1936. Oh wow! Okay. And it was when abstraction was not considered a relevant, okay, legitimate yeah. art form, and they were fighting really hard to be oh, heard. Wow. So I'm in this very um, amazing group, and because of the way everything's being digitized yeah. now, I found it really important to start digitizing the yeah. archives that oh, we have smart, in the group. So yeah. I'm the chair of the archive committee, oh, wow. and I'm spending a lot of my time archiving other artists' work oh, right wow. now. That's so just nice. Just as just sort of a labor of love. Yeah. And, 
my own is sort of suffering, but I do <laughs> I do have plans to get to my own archive. Oh, wow. And can you share your Instagram with us yes. so we can, like, check you sure. out and see any events coming up? It's um, Megan Olson Art. Okay. And it's M-E-G-A-N-O-L-S-O-N. A R T. Oh, perfect. I always joke with the uh, people I interview, like whenever I ask for the Instagram, it's like we become cheerleaders because we start spelling. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and do you have any events coming up this year or next year? I do. Actually, excuse me. I, um, a friend of mine, is, she has a store in the East, in the East Hampton. Okay. She's doing a pop-up in the Lower East Side. Oh, nice. It's to be uh, announced later in December okay. where they're going to feature my work, but I also have started painting on clothing oh nice so okay. i'm gonna do a little capsule for yeah. that event oh wow and then i'm in a group show in february with the american abstract artists i'm not sure the okay. venue and the information about that okay and make sure to follow her you guys so we can all see <laughs> thank you so much of course and thank you so much megan it's been a pleasure meeting you you have the coolest vibe so far oh, today so chill so, so relaxing much. sorry for my delayed rain it's been, been doing this since no, like 7 a.m um, and yeah, guys, go, go please follow her. She's amazing. The work is amazing. Everything is amazing. And hopefully we see each other then on your next show, okay? Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great Thank day. Thank you for Bye. listening to Tariq Talk. Follow Tariq Talk on all social media channels. And check out the video interviews online. This is Tariq Talk. Your host, Tariq Mendez, takes you on a journey with guests from all around the world. Broadcasting around the world. Around the world. This is Tariq Talk. All right, guys. Today I'm here with James at the Chishama Open Art Studios. Do you mind sharing with us your Instagram, James? Sure. It's James Frederick Rose. And can you spell that for the non-English speaking people? Yes. J-A-M-E-S-F-R-E-D-E-R-I-C-R-O-S-E. Perfect. And can you tell me a little bit about yourself as an artist? Um, well, I am, I've been painting for several years. Uh, I went to art school. I've been here at Shishama for um, about eight years. And um, originally from upstate New York, but spent a long time in California. And I'm here now in New York City for about 12, 13 years now. Oh, wow. So I've been around. And uh, my paintings are about my experiences um, and what's like meaningful to me, how it makes me feel, um, my life, yeah. basically. And what's your creative like inspiration? Where do, like, what are you inspired by? Right now, it's uh, it's about how I feel when I'm in the outdoors, like okay. when I go out into like the wilderness or um, to the beach. Yeah, just like the elements, I'm yeah. feeling feeling the elements, and uh, and like water is something that's really something that I feel has like a lot of meaning. Mm-hmm. Makes me feel like completely changes like my whole consciousness when I like get into the water or when I'm around water. Yeah. And there's also like a lot of uh, just as like human beings, water has a lot of meaning to us. It's like life, yeah. transformation, yeah. you know, everything about water. So when I w- my main main thing I'm looking at right now in painting is is like water in like natural oh, nice. places. Can you go? Because um, you seem to be like a nature person. I, I am myself as well. Can you go long periods of time without being in nature or by water? No, no, right? No, no I like have to too. go. Like I'm drawn to it. I need to be near it. Like I was in San Francisco, which is like a peninsula surrounded by water. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm in Brooklyn, which is the studio here. Shisham is right on the water, mm-hmm. and uh, I live, you know, in Bay Ridge, which is near the Verrazano, yeah. you know, on the water. And I just, I love it. I try to get out on boats. I paint paint the harbor oh, go nice. to the beach i paint the beach i go up in the mountains i'm near a stream or a waterfall okay cool mm-hmm. and how do you keep track of your ideas because i see you have so many different subjects do you do you have like a notepad or a sketchbook or i i have i go around sometimes with a large pad of paper like 16 okay. by 20 inch i like bristol because it's oh, wow, that's dedication yeah i like yeah. smooth bristol and charcoal and i can like really get in there and like move the charcoal around it just kind of glides around on the surface of the oh, wow. of the bristol paper 
and it's bright white, so I can bring these whites out of oh, the, wow, that's of, so you cool. know, like lots of tones, grays, and blacks. So I do that from life. I okay. go and draw from life. And that's mostly like around the city. I'll go to like Prospect Park and okay. sit on a bench and draw a tree. Yeah. Or, you know, just anywhere around Brooklyn. Um, but I also, for years, I was interested in painting subways okay. and people moving around on subways. And I've kind of made the connection from that work to this work in that we are all made out of water. Yeah. And when you see a, like, that could be a waterfall, that painting right there, the yeah. people coming down the stairs. Yeah. It's like oh, that's a, great... a human waterfall, yeah. you know, full of water. We're all full of blood and yeah. water, you know, and it, it, it has maybe the same sort of feeling to me. Um, so that's like a connection I've been able to make about my past work. I haven't gone back to urban settings in a while. It's been a couple of years. I've been focused on nature and the outdoors. Oh, wow. So from those sketches that you do when you're outside, do those get transferred and become actual Definitely. paintings? Definitely. I learn a lot from that. Um, I also take photographs. I have my cell phone. And I'm oh, just okay. like, say, I see something and I'm like, click. I'll take like a million photos. Yeah. So I have like hundreds of photos oh, from a nice. hike, you know. Nice. And, you know, I go out. I have a son. I have a 12-year-old son. And oh, congrats. He's like my partner and we go out. And yeah. And, and roam around the woods and find swimming holes. Oh, and, nice. You know, nice beasts. Is he painting too? No, not really. He's uh, he's creative. Um, he's probably going to get into film. He'd be thrilled to know more about your podcast. Oh, of course, like yeah. He's, have he's, him reach out. Yeah, sure. yeah, because that's something he'd be interested in. Oh, that's cool. You know, he wants to get into like film production. Yeah. He, oh, he always so he's always commenting on like the sound quality of yeah. a movie or something like that. You know, oh, like wow. these little. He has like an ear for that. Yeah, he's oh, really that's interested. a nice talent. He could be the next yeah. Scorsese, as Maybe, they say, right? Yeah, yeah, that would be dope. Yeah. And then, do you have like uh, any uh, studio ritual practices? Like when you first come in, can you get to work right away? You have to have a coffee, meditate. I need to chill out for a chill little out, bit. Okay. Yeah, just spend some time here. I drink tea. Get the I was vibes. really excited when they put the hot water uh-huh. dispenser outside oh, here. Okay. It's right outside my studio. Yeah. So I went as soon as that was brought in here, I went and got a bunch of tea oh, and a mug, perfect. and I drink drink some green tea mm-hmm. and listen to some music. Put my headphones on. Oh, wow, okay. And uh, and I don't want to spend. Yeah. You know, it's tricky once you open up the computer and yeah. all of a sudden you're on like social media and yeah. stuff. You know. I spent a little right? while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I spent a little while, but then I gotta like switch it off. And I, and I try to like have like an idea of something I want to paint when I come in here yeah. so I can like get started. Yeah. And it's good also to like stop in a painting where you know what you're going to do next. Yeah. So that when you come in here, you have the already, you're oh, going to wow. roll right into That's your next dope. thing, you know, cause it's already, you know, I know what I need to do. I know, yeah. And once I get started, then it's like an obsession for like three yeah. hours. I'm oh, just, nice. Yeah, I'm and listening to music and painting. Do you like to work in the daytime, nighttime, or for you to like more nighttime, more nighttime? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And when you start a painting, um, like, are you able to like step back? Because I a lot I interview a lot of artists. I've done like over 100 episodes so far. Mm-hmm. A lot of like 50, like 50. It's like 50, 50, 50 percent. They're able to like step back and continue the artwork. Where other 50, like they have so much anxiety to not finish it. I mean, to finish it, and other otherwise they lose the thought. Which one would you describe um, yourself as? I, I like to finish things as quickly mm-hmm. as possible um you know it's like i like it's like i said it's like you get obsessed with it you know yeah. but um but i can i can stop yeah and then and and also it is good to stop like i said also like it's good to stop where you know the next thing you're gonna do yeah. so when you come into the studio you get right into it yeah but i do like to finish things as quickly as possible nice. i'm i'm a pretty fast painter yeah and yeah. do you work like on multiple paintings at once or? i do yeah yeah i do i for the most part, I'll start one and then finish it. But I I can have a couple going at a time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I'd say I've been doing interviews today since 7 a.m. Okay. The fact that you have CDs, that's the coolest thing I've seen today. I have not seen an art studio with actual CDs. Oh, the CDs. In so yeah. long. <laughs> this is so cool Those to are, see. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I am usually streaming my music, but yeah. I do I do have a CD so cool. collection still. Yeah. Uh, you know, it shows that's my so age rare. a little bit. No, not at all. That's so rare to like actually <laughs> I find I got my that. like punk rock over there ready to go and do you have yeah. any like dream projects for collabs that like you want to do whether it's like big sculptures or like life-size sculptures do you have anything um i i let's see well i've just got a residency and that's something i've oh, congrats. I, that's always kind of like escaped me so i'm really excited about this coming summer oh, cool. i'm going to be on a vineyard in sonoma oh no nice. it's going to be awesome for yeah. two weeks i got this house to myself right on the russian river oh wow so i'm going to be able to like 
paint this like body of work about this river, how it kind of twists through this land and, yeah. and it, it, it feeds the vineyard. It feeds the life there. This river is like the artery that oh, goes wow. through that land. That's so, so I'm really excited about that. Um, so I, I guess as far as like bodies of work, I just want to keep doing what I'm doing now. Oh, wow. You know, I'm really excited about yeah. what I'm doing right now. Very dope. And can you share yeah. your Instagram with us so people can follow you and check out your work? Sure. It's uh, it's James Frederick Rose. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Yep. That's All right. It. Thank you so much, James. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Nice to meet you, too. Um, hopefully, see each other around. Okay. Who knows? All well, right. Until next time. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Tariq Talk. Follow Tariq Talk on all social media channels and check out the video interviews online.